I would. God bless you. Amen. Turn your Bibles, if you will, to Daniel. Daniel chapter number three this morning. I want to say what a blessing it's already been to be in God's house this morning. Amen. And uh, you say, well, Pastor, are you a rich man? I want to say to you that, yes, I am a rich man. And the reason that I'm a rich man is because my granddaughter just sung with her papa. And I'll be honest with you, when you get to be my age at 60 years old, all these things that you can put your hands on don't really matter. My house is going to fall apart. My job is going to end. One day my health is going to go over the cliff. But I want to tell you something that can never take away the joy of having your grandchildren follow you in the goodness of God's grace. Amen. Oh, I want to tell you, uh, she blessed my heart, and I hope that she blessed yours too. Amen. Daniel, Daniel chapter number three. Now, I'm not going to read the whole uh, chapter to you, but I do want to get into a part about Daniel that is going to absolutely excite you, and I hope that it will stir you, and that it will give you some hope and some encouragement through this week. Daniel is one of those books that it will either either commend you or condemn you. Amen. It will either commend you to get closer to God or it will condemn you because you are not serving the true and the living God. Amen. I want to tell you something that Daniel is one of those books that is steeped in prophecy. But my friend, I want to tell you something. There's even a deeper end of the pool and that pool is practical living. Amen. And that's what we want to talk about today is the practical side of Daniel. And I want to... uh, open up in God's Word. Who is that God? Daniel chapter number 3. And I'm I'm just going to read verses 15 and 16. And then we're going to get into our message. And I hope and pray that it's an encouragement to you and that you find some strength in this uh, passage of Scripture. The Bible says this, Nebuchadnezzar spake and said unto them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Do not you serve my gods, nor worship the golden image which I have set up? Now, if you be ready at what time you hear the sound of the cornet, the flute, the harp, the sackbut, palstry, and dulcimer, and all kinds of music, if you fall down and worship the image which I have made, well, good for you. But if you worship not, listen to this, if you worship not, you shall be cast the same hour into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. And who is that God that shall deliver you? out of my hands. Nebuchadnezzar has set up a idol there in uh, uh, Babylon. It's 90 feet tall. It reigns throughout all the, uh, the kingdoms. It is made of gold. It is a, a great spectacle of what the king and his power and his government and all the people have come together and said, this is what we're going to worship. This is what we're going to do. This is what we're, way we're going to go. But there was three little Hebrew men who decided that they would rather trust God than to trust the God of this world. Amen? I I don't know if you know it or not, my friend, but I want to tell you today, this world is mad that we live in. There's many gods that have set themselves up. There's gods of government, and there's gods of gold. There's gods of all the goodness and the pleasures of this world, and they've all set themselves up in the land. And they are telling everyone throughout the land that we have to bow down, and that we have to worship them, and that we have to lift them above the God of our heart and the God that that we serve. Now, I want to tell you today that you are going into an age of persecution much like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Let me give you some examples. First of all, I want you to know that their uh, kingdom had been destroyed. Jerusalem had been taken over by Nebuchadnezzar and all the good people had been dragged out of Jerusalem and now they had went over 800 miles into the kingdom of Babylon and there they were uh, uh, populated within the uh, groups of people and there were so many gods. In fact, the Bible tells us in Daniel chapter number 1 and 2 that there were so many gods that they could not number the amount of gods gods that were in Babylon. And so here we are, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who are trying now to acclimate themselves and trying to work in this environment, and now they come face to face with the gods of this world, and they have to come to a sense that they are going to stand up for their God. I want to tell you today, there's many gods in your life that is around us right now. The government tells us to do this. Uh, Society tells us to do that. Common culture and common uh, uh, practices that 
that we believe this and we believe that and that there is no right and wrong. There is no God in heaven anymore. And we all just kind of do what they said in Judges chapter 24 when we all did that which was right in our own eyes. You can't get anyone to agree on anything of one standard. My friend, I want to tell you something today. The same standard that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego held on to, which was God's Word, is the same standard that we are commissioned to hold to today. And so here we go now. Nebuchadnezzar has built this 90-foot statue made out of gold. All the governors, all the princes, all the leaders, all the people have assimilated themselves in the valley there uh, of Nineveh, and they look down and they see when the uh, uh, music starts, everyone bows down, except way in the back, there's just a few people that are standing up. And Nebuchadnezzar asked this question. Look in verse number 15. The Bible says that he asked this question. He said this in the last part. He said, and who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands? Amen. I just want to take a minute and tell you who is that God that's going to deliver you in this time of persecution, in this time of public anarchy, in this time that we are told to put down what we believe and pick up what the world wants us to do. Who is that God that is going to be able to stand against the wiles of the devil? Who is that God that is able to just give an answer and an answer of accord and say, this is the spoken of heaven? My friend, I want to tell you that day, you're going to come to a moment in your life, and it may be a day or two, it may be a week or two, it may be a year or two, but there's going to be that group of people that set themselves up to be leaders over this world and they are going to push down the church as they pick up themselves and they're going to say, who is that God that when we tell you to bow, you don't bow? Who is that God that when we tell you to not speak, you speak? Who is that God that is able to overcome us? My friend, I want to tell you, who is that God today? Amen. It's good stuff. Who is that God? My friend, I want to tell you something today. If I didn't serve the Most High God, then I'd get me another one. Amen? But I believe that God is power, Brother Herman. I believe today that God is the manifest. The Bible tells us that He reigns from heaven on high and that He spins the planets on His fingers. The Bible tells us that He is able to speak according to Colossians chapter 2 in world's form. My God is able to take and put, put back the blinded eyes. My God is able to take the withered hand and make it new. My God is able to take the sin of man and change it to the righteousness of God. My God is the only God worthy of serving. My God is the God of Jehovah. My God is the God of Isaac, Abraham, and Jacob. My God is the one who is able to provide himself a lamb. My God is powerful, and that's the God, I choose to stand here. I want to say to you today, I want to ask you a question. Who is that God that you serve? Because I want to tell you something. You, you can say it all day long, but words are cheap, but actions are paramount. Who is that God when they tell you to sit down and shut up and you stand up and speak up? Amen? Who is that God whenever they tell you to be quiet and you proclaim to the mountaintops? Who is that God that when the people say there is no way that your God will make a way? He is the God that we're speaking of here today. Who is He? First of all, I want you to see. Who is that God that we're talking about? Who is that God? Is He dull of hearing? No, my friend. The Bible says that He is ever listening for our cries, Brother Herman. The Bible says that He slumbers not, that He will hear us in our cries, that He will hear us in our valleys, that He will hear us at the midnight hour. My God is not dull of hearing, and my God is not distant. Some journey that He has taken, and He has forgotten about His children. My God is one who is not distressed. He is one who is not helpless. My God. My God is a mighty power and my for, mighty fortress in a time of trouble. My God is that God. You ask me, who is that God, preacher? Well, my friend, I want to tell you right now, that God, the my God, is the one who is present in the problem of your everyday life. Amen.
Look what it says here. It says that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who are all they're trying to do is do their job. All they're trying to do is live their life. All they're trying to do is raise their family. All they're trying to do is be obedient to God. And now the world has come after these Christians. The world has come after these men. The world has come after these uh, men of God. And they've got to make a decision who their God is. And my friend, I can imagine Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they look around around and everybody else bowed down. They look around at the mighty uh, statue that's out in the distance. They see the soldiers. They understand what happens when Nebuchadnezzar puts his thumb down and they go. But my friend, what it is, they made a decision that their God was going to be present during their problem. Amen? So many people today walk around with a, a, a false God. Uh, their money is their God. And whenever problems press them, they can't buy their way out of it. Or they say, they're my strength is my God. And when their problems come and they try to fight them way out of it, they're not strong enough. Uh, my friend, others of them tell them uh, that their education is their God and they try to think their way out of a problem, but their problem fails them and leaves. My friend, I want to say God is present in the problem. Look what it says in verse number 16 and 17. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said unto the king, O king Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. Amen. Uh, my God is the God that is going to stand with me here on this field, or is he going to stand with me in the fire? My God is not going to leave me. My God is not going to forsake me. My God is not going to forget me. My God is that God that's going to stay with me during the problem. That's why old saints of God hold on to the altar of God. And they know that their only hope cometh from the Lord. They know that the only strength that they have is in the Savior. They know that the only might that they have is in the Word of God. And my friend, I want to tell you something today. We need to know who our God is. Our God is the God who is present in the problem. The Bible says this in Hebrews chapter number 13. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you so that we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper and I will not fear what men shall do unto me. Whoa, who is your God? Who is that God? Who is that God? That God is present in your problem, amen? amen. Yes. I want you to understand something today. When problems come, as they surely will, because we live in a world that's dominated by the Antichrist and the wickedness and the, the wiles of the devil and all the demons of the devil, it's going to come to a place when you're at work and you're either going to have to sit down and shut up or you're going to have to stand up. Who is your God? Who is your God? Is He a God that's going to stand beside you? If you follow His Word, you follow His will, you walk in the warrior spirit of the Holy Spirit, and you know that no matter what you do, God is with you, and that's how you can stand. That's the true and the living God. Who is that God that will get you through the fiery furnace? It is the God of the uh, Bible who said that He will stand. The devil wants you to believe that you have been abandoned. Amen. Amen. The devil wants you to believe that you're doing it all by yourself. The devil wants you to believe that you're all alone and no one else feels what you feel or knows what you know or is going through what you're going through. My friend, I want to tell you something. The Bible says that he is closer than a brother. Amen. The Bible tells us that he was tempted without sin as every one of us was. He was hungry in the desert. He was thirsty by the brook. He was uh, uh, buffeted by Satan. He was downcast by the world. He was even crucified by the government, but yet the Bible tells us that Jesus Christ will stay with us through the valleys and through the mountains. He will walk yes. with us through that path of trouble. He will walk with us over those uh, areas of difficulty. He is a God who is present in the problem, and He will not leave you. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego says this, we're not careful to answer you in this matter. If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace, and He will deliver us out of thy hand, O King. How many of you has got that kind of faith? Amen. You know how it is. Come on. You know, they, they say, 
It's a matter of time. You're posting too much about that Jesus guy on your Facebook. We need to take that down. It might be offensive to other groups. So, Richmond, I know you're a church member. I know you're a Christian. But you need to tamper that down just a little bit. You need to take that off there because we don't want you associated with our company. And, and now we might offend the Antichrist, or we may offend the Satanic, or we may offend this group or that group. My friend, I want to tell you, is your God that God who's not going to leave you in the problem? Amen. You may be one with your school, Jaden. You're coming up in middle school. Some of you high schoolers, you, you, the, the, your whole family, your whole friendship, your whole school is telling you that God is dead, that God's not real, that God has gone on a far journey. My friend, is he that kind of God that will not fail you and will not leave you? And he is providing a present in, in your problem. Is he there? Amen. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego says, listen, who is that God, O king? He is the God who is present in my problem. Amen. But not only that, amen. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego says, who is that God? He has provided me protection, O king. Amen. Say what you want to say. Do what you want to do. Uh, put whatever law you want to put in your books. I'm not going to listen to you. Look what he said in 17, in verse 17. He said this, If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from this burning, fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thy hand, O king. But if not, be it known. Hallelujah. Be it known. Be it known. He says in 18, Be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not. We will not serve your gods, neither will we worship your image, which thou hast set up. They said, listen, I put my trust in Jesus Christ. I put my trust in the Lord Jehovah. He is my shield. He is my buckler. He is my sword. He is my all in all. And you're not going to get to me unless you go through him. And if it gets to me, it is for my glory and for my good. I want to tell you something. You have no power over me, devil. You have no power over me, world. You have no power over me, king. You have no power over me because God, Jehovah, He is present with me and He provides for me a protection that you will never understand. Amen? The Bible tells us over in Dothan that Elisha was one of the prophets and he comes out of his tent one morning and he had a, a, a young man with him. And the young man comes out and he looks upon the hills. And upon the hills are the Assyrians. And there's thousands upon thousands of them. And he says, Master, what shall we do? Elijah said it this way. He said, God's providing for us. He said, greater is they that would with me than they that are with the world. Amen. Now, Elijah says this. He said, open their eyes. Open his eyes that he may see. And when he opened his eyes, there was angels all around them, around that. And the Bible tells us that Elisha spoke and the enemy in Assyria was destroyed. My friend, I'm trying to tell you this. God is protecting you. If you are walking with God and present in the problem, God is going to be somebody who is able to provide protection for you. Amen. I want you to understand that. Did he not protect David in the lion's den? Did he not protect uh, Noah uh, in the ark? Did he not protect each and every one of us? Did he not protect? Amen. His arm is able to protect us in the times of trouble. In fact, the Bible tells us in Hebrews that he has even dispatched a special angel for you and for me. Amen. Jeff, my green, I want to tell you, when you run that red light this morning, because you're too busy looking at yourself in the mirror, amen, there was an angel holding back that car, amen. This morning, amen, Jaden, when you were doing your hair and you were blow drying it, standing in the middle of the bathtub with the water running, hey, it wasn't because of the truth, amen. We're foolish sometimes, church. Every one of us have done something stupid, amen. Well, maybe everybody but me. Why, just the, other, just the other day. Now, you know I'm hard of hearing. I've got hearing aids. But the other day, God's protection rained upon me. Oh, it was going to be terrible. Oh, it was going to be disastrous. Oh, it was going to be final defeat for me, Miss Connie. I, I come to a place and I sit down and all of a sudden, my wife said, shut up. And I thought she said, stand up. And when I stood up... 
the Lord put an angel between us too. I'm telling you that God is that God that is able to be present with us in our problems. Because I want to tell you, when I stood up, I realized what I'd done. And I called unto the name of God. I said, oh, Jesus, get me out of here. And he gave me flight. He gave me flight. Who is that God? He is the God that is able to be present in whatever problem you're in. He is a God that is providing His protection for you. Here it is. Now that you can see that Nebuchadnezzar is the government official. And he speaks, people die. You can see that there is a fiery furnace that these three boys knew about. In fact, it says this in verse 17, that they were aware of the punishment. The fiery furnace. You can see that everyone around Nebuchadnezzar was going to do his bidding. But now it comes to a point of faith that they knew that God was there. That God was being with them. And God was going to protect them. And they said, listen, you may kill my body. You know? You know, so many people, don't, I, I don't advocate that you run red lights like Brother Jeff or you take showers with a blow dryer like Jaden or you back talk to your wife like I did. Those things are dangerous. Tempt not the Lord thy God. But let me tell you what, they can only take your human life, amen? My, I have eternal life. And the Bible says, Jesus speaking, he said, whatsoever thou commit unto me, I will no wise lose any, amen? The worst the devil can do for me is destroy my physical body. Amen, but I've got eternal life. Who is that God? It is that God that is providing protection for you. Look at the third point. Who is that God? Now, you've you got to go back and you understand here that what's going on is this great fight between Satan and the Savior. It's not about the three Hebrews. It's not about Nebuchadnezzar. All these are allegory or metaphor to teach us that we are in constant battle between heaven and hell. Heaven is trying to rescue us, and hell is trying to receive us, and we are in the balance of this great battle. And here, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego says, God, you are going to be present with me in the problem that I'm in. And you are going to provide the protection for me during this time. And God comes on board and demonstrates. He says, I am proving my power. Who is that God? He is the God who is able. He is the God who is proving his power. Look in verses 25. Verse 25 says this. And Nebuchadnezzar answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire. And they have no hurt. And the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Verse 26, Then Nebuchadnezzar came near unto the mouth of the burning fiery furnace and spake and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, you servants of the Most High God, come forth and come hither. And then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, come forth out of the midst of the fire. Now here is God proving that He is who He said He was. That He'd do what He said He'd do. And God said, I'm going to walk with you. I'm going to provide for you. I am not going to leave you. I am going to provide you protection during the problem in your life. Now, what was their problem? Their problem was that they were being cast into a fiery, a fiery furnace. Amen? In fact, the Bible tells us that it was heated so hot that 17 of the men, 17 of the men that was tasked at throwing them in there died. The mightiest of the mighty, they threw Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in, and they got so uh, hot that they just melted. That's their problem. And th they needed some protection, didn't they? Now, I want to tell you something. They didn't need Jake from Allstate. Amen? Oh, by the way, your, your fire insurance is for your after your house burns down. You do know that, don't you? Uh, it's always afterwards. Jake from Allstate is there to help you after the problem. God said, I'm going to help you before the problem even gets there. God is providing His power. First of all, by He walks in there. Look in verse 25. The Bible says that, Lo, I see four men loose and walking, and the fourth is likened to the Son of God. He is going to walk in the fire with you, 
And not only walk in the fire with you, he's going to provide protection for you. And the only way he can do that is that he has power over the fire. Amen? See how this is just logically? God said, listen, there's no one else who can protect you. There's no one else who can provide for you. There's no one else who will stay with you. I am going to provide the protection. So what I'm saying is this. Whenever the world asks you, who is that God that will deliver you out of my hand? There is only one who has power to prove that he's God of heaven. Amen? I want to tell you that. How many of you have, have seen your loved ones or friendships or others that are close to death and you knowing that they're going to die, but God touches them? Amen? I've got a, a son, my oldest son, Jonathan. He was within a few hours, maybe a day, of us turning the ventilator off of him. He was totally down. He'd been on the ventilator for many weeks, and we were contemplating what we were going to do. And we just started praying. We were praying so earnestly and praying, and others were praying. And it got to the point to where the doctors are saying, we've done everything that we can do. There's nothing else we can do. There's no hope for, you know, we don't know what we're going to do. We've tried everything, and we prayed. And I never will forget, there was a deacon friend of mine. His name was Steve Ellis. Steve was coming to console us, console me and Sheila. And Steve come in, and all, all the, the blood was out of his face. He was as ashen as he could be. It was like he was just staring at death. And he come up, and he hugged me, and he said, Brian, I'm so sorry for your loss. I'm so sorry that he died. I'm so sorry that it had to happen to you. And I, I said, Steve, who are we talking about? He said, Jonathan, your son. I said, Jonathan's not dead. Really? Come find out my mother-in-law had told her friend and her friend had told another friend and another friend had told somewhere in that coconut telegraph Jonathan died isn't that the way the world is you know after that night I can remember that Jonathan started getting better you see I think it had to come to the point to where we understood that Jonathan was going to die unless somebody proved their power and I'll, I'll be honest with you, yes, Dr. Basha, yes, all the doctors in, in uh, Bradley Memorial, all those doctors did great, all the nurses were great. But I want to tell you, I walked out of there knowing that God is the God that has proven his power in my life. Amen. We're coming up on a terrible anniversary. My youngest son, who was dead. You, you've heard the story how that I come up on the car wreck. I went to take care of the person in the car wreck, climbed down into the car, and it was my son. Car's on fire. He's not breathing. There is no heartbeat. He's dead. I'm, I've got my hands on his pulse. I squirmed down a little bit more. I began doing CPR what little I could, breathing into his nose and his mouth because his face was so uh, bloodied and broken. And we were going to die there in that car. But the Holy Spirit. I'm talking, I'm talking about who is that God. I'm talking about who is that God. And that God spoke just as clear in my heart, not audibly. All I could hear was the horn going off, you know, from the, from the wreck. And the, the, all I could see was the dust from the airbags and the flame from the engine compartment. All I could do was just do what I was going to do. And we were going to die. And we were going to end it right here. And my wife was going to find us all right there in that car. The Holy Spirit said, he's not dead. And I don't know whether it was one minute, five minutes, or it seemed like an hour. But I kept blowing and I kept pushing upside down in that car and all of a sudden Miss Connie I'll never forget it the loudest sound I've ever heard in my life <sighs> now where do you think that breath came from I'm talking about who is that God who is proving his power when you're in such a problem that there is no way out of it. There is no hope for it. There is no goodness in it. There is no way you're getting out of this. And then all of a sudden, God proves his power. And a breath of life comes into the situation. That's the God that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered King Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar said, who is that God that will deliver you out of my hands? Nebuchadnezzar who said, I'm going to throw you into that fiery furnace unless you bow down to me. Nebuchadnezzar said, you have no hope. And then all of a sudden, God shows up. 
God shows out. And Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego step out of the fiery furnace. Now that's the God that I'm talking about this morning. That's the God that is able to meet your needs. Whatever your needs are this morning, you may be here today and you say, my health is beyond hope. My friend, God can speak to that. But you may be here today and say, my relationship is beyond hope. God can resurrect that. You may be here today and say, I've been so hurt and so broken and so overcome. God can speak to you. God is the God who is able to prove His power beyond measure. Amen. One day, two sisters were looking and their brother died. They loved their brother. They loved their brother beyond measure. And they put him in the tomb. They sealed the tomb. And it was four days later before Jesus come walking by. I'm going somewhere with this. Who is that God? Mary and Martha and all the people around said, Oh Lord, if you had just been here my brother wouldn't have died. If you'd have just been here, you could have resurrected him. If you'd have just been here, you could have healed him. If you'd have just been here, this problem would not be causing me so much pain. If you'd just be here. Jesus said, he said, Mary, Martha, I am the resurrection. Amen. And I, I, I want to tell you, the only thing that changed Lazarus from dead to declaring God's glory was Jesus. Lazarus come forth. Today, God wants to prove to you that he's still got the power to do what is necessary for you to glorify him. Amen? What is that God? Who is that God? He is the God who has proven his power. One last thing, and I'm closing this thing. Who is that God? It's the God who is going to proclaim his praise. Look in verse number 28. The Bible says this in verse 28. It says very clearly in verse number 28, it says, Then Nebuchadnezzar spake. Now remember, Nebuchadnezzar was so mad that he threw these Hebrews in, cost 17 of his best soldiers. The whole country was looking. Nebuchadnezzar was mad. And now all of a sudden God proves his power. And now listen to what Nebuchadnezzar does. He begins to praise the living God. In verse 28, Nebuchadnezzar spake and said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who hath sent his angel and delivered his servants in, that trusted in him and have changed the king's words. God is able to get glory in whatever the problem that you're being presented today. This is the key of it all. The Bible said in Ephesians 1, it says, for the praise of His glory. The Bible says that we walk through valleys not for our punishment, but for His praise. When we get out the other side of the valley, we can stand and say, it was Jesus that got me through. When we walk out of the hospital, we can say that it's Jesus who gave me life. When we say that our marriages and our relationships have been restored, we can say that it's Jesus. When we get down to our last dime and we still have food on our table and we still have a bed to sleep in we can say that Jesus is the power it is that we can proclaim the praise of God's glory and that's what the world did my friend I want to tell you in the world that we live in today the world is saying there is no hope the world is saying that we're bound to anarchy the world is saying that we are destitute and destroyed. But my friend, if you will stand for Jesus Christ, the church can come out of this time of trouble as purified as a bride presented to the uh, groom. It is that Jesus Christ is purifying those who are named the name of Christ, those who are studying, those who are staying, those who are speaking and saying God is the Savior in heaven. Who is that God? It is the God that we can proclaim praise because we know that in the end Jesus Christ and his saints will win. Amen. In fact the Bible tells us this in Revelation chapter number 18 that we shall be in white clothing riding upon a horse and we will come and rule over nations brother Herman. Amen. Now just think about it. Nothing that I've done no power that I have, no protection that I can afford myself, God has provided for me all these things. He asked me but one thing. He said, proclaim my name. Proclaim my name. And that's what he does. Look in verse number 30. 
It says this, Then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon. What am I trying to say? I'm trying to say this, that the, who is this God? Is it the God that you proclaim who will profit you? Amen. You may not have a big mansion on this earth. You may not have a great wealth on this earth. But the Bible says that you will lay up treasures in heaven where rust does not corrupt nor moth does sting. Amen. What do you do? Let me ask you. Missies, you get a song. Come on up. Who is that God? Who, who is the God that you serve? Is your God dead? Is your God gone to a distant way? Is your God dumb? Is your God one who cannot help you? My friend, I want to tell you my God's not that way. My God is able. My God is the one that is going to be present with you in the problem. He will not leave me. He will not forsake me. In fact, as the world uh, pushes even more upon me, I will go closer to the Lord. Amen? Where can I go but unto the Lord? Where can I find happiness? Where can I find hope? Where can I find peace? Where can I find rest? There is no rest except Jesus Christ. I want to ask you today, is God present in your problem this morning? Is God providing a protection for you that you can know and that you can feel and that you can sense? God said that He wants to walk with you. And when God walks with you, the great Jehovah Jireh, the great warrior, the great King of kings and Lord of lords, there is none more powerful than Jesus. And when He walks with you, He is providing a protection for you that you so desperately need. He's going to prove His power to you. If you'll just let him, if you'll stop taking the reins, if you'll stop driving the wheel, if you'll stop choosing the direction, if you'll just be obedient to what God wants in your life, if you'll be obedient to what God is saying to you in your life, if you'll be obedient to God's word in your life. God said this in Proverbs chapter number three. He said, trust not in your own way, lean not into your own understanding, but acknowledge him in all thy ways and he shall direct your path and your path will prosper. You say, preacher, what am I going to do? You need to proclaim His praise. Proclaim His praise. Stand, would you stand with you f to, to your feet? Would you stand up? Brother Herman, I just want to praise the Lord. The praise song. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that's within me. Bless His holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all of His benefits. Praise His name. Even in the times of dungeon, Paul praised His name. When John was cast upon the Isle of Patmos, he praised His name. When Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were being thrown into the fiery furnace, I believe their last words were simply this, My God will deliver. Praise Him this morning. Maybe you need to come and change God's. Maybe your God is failing you. Maybe you need a God who will not fail, who will not lie, and who will not leave. Would you come as they may song? Missy, would you just begin to sing? Through my disappointment, oh, strife yeah. and discontentment, I cast my every care Free, on the at? Lord. Come on, Rich, let's sing. Obsession, pain or deep depression. I'm standing Amen. on the solid Amen. rock. Brother Herman, let's sing. I'm standing on the rock, on the rock, on the rock of, of ages, safe from every storm, from all the storms, all the storms and rages. Rich in love, I'm rich, but not from not Satan's, from Satan's wages. I'm standing on the solid. Even though he's gone Listen. now, I don't feel alone now. With comfort came the spirit of That's the right. Lord. He's our comforter. Now with his word to guide me, from temptation, from temptation hide. hide me. I'm standing Sing on with the us, solid Sing with us. rock. I'm standing, standing on the rock. On the rock. Not 
from Satan's wages, I'm standing on the solid rock. On the course, Roger. I'm standing on the rock of ages, fleeing from all the storms that rage is not from Satan's wages, I'm standing on the solid rock. Amen. God bless you for being in God's house today. We hope and pray that the Lord has touched you. And the next time the world asks you, who is that God? Now you've got an answer. Amen. Brother Herman Davis, dismiss us in a word of prayer, brother.